When we want to cover a solid or a surface, we are looking at calculating its area. A solid can be a prism. The following is an example of a regular hexagonal prism. It has two congruent and parallel faces called bases, and its lateral faces are rectangles. A prism's lateral faces are always rectangles when it is a right prism. If it is oblique, then the lateral faces are parallelograms. To help us find the area of a prism, we can decompose it, that is, make it two-dimensional. As we can see in the example, the regular hexagonal prism is made up of two hexagons and six rectangles. Therefore, we can calculate the area of each plane figure that composes it to find its total area. There is another method to find the total area of a solid. You may know the following formula. Total area equals twice the area of a base plus the lateral area. Let's look at the formula more closely. The area of a base, generally denoted by A subscript B, is the surface occupied by one of the faces serving as the solid's bases. In our prism, the bases are two regular hexagons. The lateral area, generally denoted A subscript L, is the surface occupied by the faces which do not serve as bases for the solid. In other words, it is the surface of the figures that connect the two bases. Here, the lateral area is made up of six rectangles. The total area, generally denoted A subscript T, is the surface of all the faces forming the solid. Therefore, we conclude that the total area is equal to two times the area of one base plus the lateral area. Let's go into more detail with this formula. How do we find the area of a base in a solid? Good question. Here, since the base is a hexagon, we use the formula for a regular polygon to find the area. That is, side times apothem times number of sides divided by two. Be careful. This formula should not always be used to calculate the area of a prism's base. When the base is a triangle, we use the formula for the area of a triangle. When it's a square, we use the one for a square. In other words, each base has its own formula. Always identify the base of the solid first before choosing the respective formula. As for the lateral area, it's a little different. The lateral area of a prism can always be replaced by the following formula. Perimeter of the base times the height of the prism. Intriguing, isn't it? First, it's important to know that the height of a prism is the distance measured perpendicularly between its two bases. The measurement does not change, even if the prism is placed in a different position. If we decompose the regular hexagonal prism, we will find an image like this one. We notice that we can represent the lateral area with a single large rectangle. The base of this rectangle's measurement corresponds to the perimeter of the hexagon and its height is the prism's height. Since the formula for the area of a rectangle is base times height and its base corresponds to the perimeter of the hexagon, the lateral area of a prism is always equal to the perimeter of the base times the prism height. Let's look at an example of calculating total area together using the previous formula. Here, we are asked to find the total area of the following hexagonal prism. How will we find it? We know the total area of a prism is twice the area of a base plus the lateral area. We can start by calculating the area of a base. Here, the bases are hexagons. To find the area of a regular hexagon, we use the formula San divided by two. Remember that S represents the measurement of one side, A the measurement of the apothem, and N the number of sides. Next, we replace the formula's variables by the values in the problem, and then we perform the calculations. The area of one base is 31.14 centimeters squared. Don't forget the area is expressed in square units like centimeters squared, meters squared, or millimeters squared. We continue with the lateral area. We will need the following formula. Perimeter of the base times the prism's height. Next, we replace the formula's variables by the values in the problem. 
Here, the perimeter of the hexagon is 6 times 3.46 because the hexagon has six sides and they each measure 3.46 centimeters. Then, we multiply by the height of the prism. The lateral area is 166.08 centimeters squared. We now have all the elements necessary to calculate the total area of the hexagonal prism. By adding the area of the two bases with the lateral area, we find that the total area is 228.36 centimeters squared. Let's look at another example. In the following example, we are looking for the total area of this cube. A cube has a very important characteristic. It is made up of six congruent squares. Do you think we could use this characteristic to calculate the total area? We just have to calculate the area of one of its squares and multiply that value by six. Since the area of a square is s to the power of two, we replace s by five and square it. The total area of the cube is 150 decimeters squared. Don't you think this is faster than using the formula total area equals twice the base area plus the lateral area? It's up to you to choose the methods you prefer to calculate the total area of a solid.